वेलकम फ्रेंड्स माय सेल्फ शॉपतपूर्णी फ्रॉम बाय लाइफ होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग वेरी वेल सो टुडे इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू अबाउट हाउ टू डू पोस्ट हॉक टू की टेस्ट ओके सो इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैव डिस्कस्ड हाउ टू परफॉर्म वन वे एंड ओवर टेस्ट व्हेन दे आस्क यू टू जस्टिफाई इफ देयर इज एनी सिग्निफिकेंट डिफरेंस इन द मीन वैल्यू ओके मीन वैल्यू ऑफ अ सर्टेन पैरामीटर बेस्ड ऑन अदर वेरिएबल्स ओके लाइक in this problem they have given you a data table where you can see five groups are there okay pond 1 pond 2 pond 3 pond 4 and pond 5 they may ask you to justify that these are the values of strontium level present in the pond pond 1 present in the pond 2 present in the pond 3 4 and 5 they may ask you to justify if there is any significant effect of these ponds on the mean strontium level okay so for that you need to do the one way anova test and after that if you find that yes there is some kind of significant difference of these pond on the value of strontium level then they may ask you to uh, justify actually which groups okay which group of ponds show that difference show that significant difference so they may ask you the question like that the data the data of strontium concentration that is presented in milligram per ml in five different ponds apply one way and of and justify if the mean strontium concentration is same in all the five ponds or not so they are asking you to do the one way and of okay assuming alpha equal to 0.05 and they are asking next that justify the differences among five ponds okay so now they are asking what are the differences among five ponds on the strontium concentration so for doing the last portion you need to do the multiple comparison of mean okay so that is known as the tukey test so here first of all we will do the simple one way anova test for all these five groups okay <clears throat> that i have already uh, told you how to do one way and what is the video uh, link will be in the description box below i will request you uh, i would request you to first of all watch that video of one way and over and then come to this video and learn the tukey test okay so for you can see here that there are five groups so k equal to 5 and each group there are six samples okay so n will be in uh, n will be 30 5 6 is 30 i is the number of uh, uh, showing the number of groups 1 2 3 4 5 ni is the number of samples present in each group here all groups show similar number of samples so it will be 6 for each and every group summation of xij is the summation of uh, strontium concentration present in each group so you have to just add up all these uh, things and you have to write down here similarly you have to add up all the strontium concentration in pond 2 and you have to write down here okay and xi bar is the mean mean strontium concentration present in pond 1 so just add up all these values uh, and write it down here and divide it by the number of samples that is 6 and you will find the mean value so like that do every, uh, for the for each and every group okay now this is the summation of the population summation okay so you have to add all these values and you have to put uh, write down the value here at add, added up value here so if you find this uh, not so okay you can do uh, just uh, add up these five values then also you can uh, find the same value here and now this is the population mean how can you find that just divide this value the summation value by total number of samples that is 30 and you will find the mean value of the population okay so for doing anova i have uh, already told you in my previous video you need to hypothesis uh, some null uh, you need to write down some null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis in null hypothesis uh, we write that there is no effect of different ponds in the mean strontium level that means the mean strontium level will be same for each and every pond okay that is mu 1 will be mu 2 will be mu 3 will be mu 4 equal to mu 5 okay so mean strontium level in each and every pond will be same in our null hypothesis but in our alternative hypothesis 
we say that mean strontium concentration are not same for each and every bond okay so this is our alternative hypothesis and we have to test which hypothesis goes with this problem so for that we need to find out total ss and total df then group ss and group df and ultimately the error ss and error df i have already told in my previous video how to find out these values okay just uh, write down the formulas here and you can easily find out these values okay so now i am going to the next page in the next page you can see that uh, how to find out the group ms and error ms values so i have al already told how to find out group ms and error ms value in my one way and over um, video and then you need to formulate a summary table of anova where you will write the um, uh, ss df and ms values for total group and error variations okay so just write down all the values here so that uh, your um, further calculation will be easier okay so now we are going into the our two key test so before doing two key test just write down some important uh, infos like capital n or total number of sample is 30 Uh, small uh, k that means number of group is 5 and uh, n that is a uh, number of samples present in each group is 6 which is equal in each group okay so mind it here that if your group has dissimilar number of samples okay then you no need to do the tukey kramer test where there will be a little bit difference than this tukey test so now we need to do the multiple comparison okay we need to compare each and every group and for that we need to rank them according to their mean values in increasing order so see here so see here the they are showing here in this table you can see the mean values so the lowest mean value is present in group 1 so write down the mean values first of all write down the mean values in increasing order so 32.1 then 40.2 then 41.1 44.1 and last but not the least 58.3 and then write down their group number 32.1 is shown by the group number 1 then 40.2 is shown by the group number 2 then 41.1 is shown by the group number 4 then 44.1 is shown by the group number 3 and 58.3 is shown by the group number 5 so write down their group numbers okay now you need to find out the standard error okay what is standard error standard error is root over error ms by n you can find out the uh, value of error ms from the table okay so you will find out the ac value and mind it here as the n is same for each and every group the ac will be also same for each and every group comparison and last but not the least you need to find out the q value q value is similar to the t value which depicts here the differences okay differences in mean of each comparison divided by standard error and then you need to find out the critical q value for alpha equal to 0.05 for the alpha equal to 0.05 the v or the or the new equal to error df error df is here 25 we have already found out this value from the table okay the error df is 25 okay and then obviously the k k is the number of groups here number of group is 5 so the critical value of q at 0.05 significance level for df25 error df25 and for group number 5 is 4.153 now you have to write down this table and find out uh, that you have to compare each and every group here okay so how can you compare that see here you have to compare the highest valued group with all other groups like compare 5 with 1 then 5 with 2 then 5 with 4 then 5 with 3 and similarly then compare the second lowest value 3 with 1 3 with 2 3 with 4 then the uh, uh, third lowest value 4 with 1 and 4 with 2 and then the 2 with 1 okay and in this manner you have to compare each and every group so see i have i will show you how to compare each and every group like first one is 5 versus 1 
now you have to write down their difference in terms of mean okay so the uh, mean of group 5 is 58.3 and the uh, group 1 is 32.1 just write uh, uh, write down the um, mean difference of uh, these two groups and ac will be obviously same for each and every group as any similar for all the groups and how to find out the q value just divide the difference value with the ac value so 26.2 divided by 1.828 uh, which gives 20.47 and now the main part the main part is you have to look into this value this q value and see that if this q value is uh, lesser than or equal to your critical q value if this is lesser than or critical uh, equal to your uh, critical q value then accept the null hypothesis and if it is greater than your critical q value then reject the null hypothesis here you can see 20.47 is greater than 4.153 so we are rejecting the null hypothesis that q5 equal to q1 q5 equal to q1 okay so we are rejecting the null hypothesis that means it is following the alternative hypothesis in similar way do all the comparisons i have told before and do all their difference ac will be same for each and every one and uh, find out the q values in this problem we have found that the q value for group 3 versus 2 and group 3 versus 4 and group 4 versus 2 show lesser values lesser q values than our critical q value okay so that means in these three groups we cannot reject the null hypothesis don't reject the null hypothesis what what was our null hypothesis q3 equal to q2 for this group for this group q3 equal to q4 and for this group q4 equal to q2 see q4 equal to q4 two so in these three groups we cannot reject the null hypothesis but x um, in other groups we can reject the null hypothesis so at last we should write it down like this thus we conclude that q5 is different from all other means as in all the q5 groups we have seen that they are following alternative hypothesis so their mean is different from all other groups where in case of q1 also we have found that the um, q1 is different from all other means as they are following the alternative hypothesis but in case of q2 q4 and q3 groups we cannot reject the null hypothesis we have already seen that so we cannot distinguish them from each other okay so we can write it down like this q1 not equal to q2 but q2 equal to q4 equal to q3 which is not equal to q5 that means q2 3 4 we cannot distinguish them as they are following the null hypothesis but obviously we can Uh, distinguish q1 from all the groups and also we can distinguish q5 from all the groups as q1 and q5 both are following alternative hypothesis for other groups okay with other groups so this is our final two key test result okay so uh, this proves that in our one way anova we have found the significant difference uh in the strontium level based on different pond groups and those level is actually reflected in the q q1 pond as q1 pond is differing with all the other ponds and q5 pond which is differing with all the other ponds whereas q2 q4 and q3 ponds are almost similar in nature okay so this is all about two keys test i hope uh, this video will be useful for you and if you find this video useful don't forget to hit the like button and share it to your friends and if you uh, find uh, these videos on biostatistics useful in my channel don't forget to subscribe the channel by pressing the bell button thanks for watching and happy learning